you're walking into a hospital room. In behind you, you hear a sound, and you turn around, and a small robot has followed you in. That robot has a tray of amenities. You take a bottle of water, a snack, and a sleeping kit. As much as you're nervous to be here, you like that little robot. That robot, let's call him Marty, has already had a busy day. He has delivered sheets and towels and a cleaning kit to the housekeeper to make sure your room was ready for you. When it's time for your procedure, your hospital bed autonomously rolls down the hallway under its own power. When it arrives through the operating room, you're also met by a surgery kit. That surgery kit was packed in an e-commerce fulfillment center, and it has a matching barcode to your chart. The nurse scans the kit and scans the chart to confirm the match. As you lay there in that hospital bed, you marvel. People don't really pick things up anymore. People don't really carry things. Well, sure they do, but all the routine tasks have now been automated. I tell you that story to introduce the topic today, which is that in the future, your coworker will be a robot. It's also a personal story to me because my own mother was a hospital nurse for 40 years. She retired in 2021 as part of the Great Resignation. And during that time in service, she suffered three workers' compensation injuries. With the technology I just described, all of those injuries would have been avoidable. Now, when I say that your coworker will be a robot, you might think of the big yellow robot arms in Detroit, or you might think of the swarm of robotics in an Amazon fulfillment center. Those robots execute all day, every day, on exactly what they're told according to a pre-programmed script. They're separated from the humans with a chain link fence or guardrail. So I'm not talking about legacy automation. I'm talking about robots that are designed to work directly with humans to keep pace and understand human movements, including pedestrian movements. We all know that when we show up to work, we adapt to those conditions. That's what it means to be human. That's human nature. The new generation of robotics are called collaborative robots, or cobots for short, and they are designed to work with you in your job to make your life easier. We have to understand exactly where we're at in the industry today, and I'm gonna make some predictions for the future. So by the end of this conversation, I want everyone in this generation and the next to have made some decisions about how they want to work with technology, because like it or not, it's coming. Currently, leading companies are deploying robots in everyday workspaces. I've got a couple stories for you, each which are from a couple miles from my house around this area in Jacksonville. The first is a dry cleaner. There's a dry cleaner that has installed a robotic dry cleaning system that handles all of the clothes robotically. It sorts them. This robotic dry cleaning system has increased the amount of clothes that can be kept in storage. It has improved employee ergonomics, and it has cut down on lost clothing. An added benefit is that when your clothes are ready, it sends you a text message, and you can go 24-7 to a kiosk and retrieve your clothes. Of course, if you're like me and you prefer the manual counter, you are always greeted with an employee that has a smile. That employee has a smile because they don't go fetch garments from the maze of clothing anymore. My favorite part of this story is that the owner of this dry cleaner is an 80-year-old woman. When I asked her what was she thinking when she invested in a robotic dry cleaning system, she told me it was a no-brainer. She said she's making more money, that her customers love it, and that her employees are happy. The second story I have for you is a dental office. This dental office has invested in a robotic tooth manufacturing system and an AI software program. The dentist puts a camera in your mouth and takes photos. The AI program stitches those photos together and creates a 3D model of your teeth. The dentist can then diagnose your bite, design a tooth repair, or plan for a tooth replacement. Let's take a complex procedure such as a crown. The dentist tells the AI software to generate a proposed 3D model of the crown. The dentist then modifies the 3D model for best fit, comfort, and durability. After he's done, he turns the screen around so that you can see it in the chair. And after you've approved the design of that tooth, he sends it to a 3D printer. The 3D printer spends 10 minutes in production and then 10 minutes in baking, and presto, 
your tooth repair is done. What used to be a two-week procedure is now a two-hour procedure. When I asked this dentist if he was happy with his investment in automation, he said that he's making more money. The patient spends less time in the chair and less touch with the office staff. He also said that based on this success and the client feedback of being in and out in one morning, that he's thinking of opening a clinic focused solely on complex tooth repairs that can be done in the same day using robotics and AI. And that third example I have for you, well, one of those healthcare facilities is right here in town. This healthcare facility started its robotic journey when they did time trialing of nurses using a stopwatch. What they realized is that nurses in a hospital setting spend 40% of their time fetching things or searching through supply closets. Imagine if those nurses could reclaim that time to spend on patient care and patient outcomes. Hospital nurses travel six miles per shift on average. That is the same distance as a professional soccer player will travel in a match. Only the professional soccer player doesn't do it on hard concrete floors, often carrying something or pushing something. How much more energized would our nurse, nursing staff be if they didn't have to travel that much? If you want to solve the national nursing shortage, cobots are part of the solution. Perhaps the most important part of this overall equation is the worker. I've been designing and installing cobotic systems for six years, and I can tell you that for the most part, workers love it. They can upskill with programming, troubleshooting, and maintenance skills. That makes them more marketable, and they command higher wages. Does every employee want to work with robots? No. And the emergence of cobots will open up additional opportunities in quality assurance, safety, and customer service. Now, for the workers that want to work with their hands, agile and handy workers are always going to be in high demand. We are never going to automate 100% of tasks. And yes, we also need a resilient workforce for that time when the power goes out. For the next 10 years, we're going to be on the early adoption phase of cobots and robots in the workplace. Leading edge employers and companies will be investing strategically, both in the technology that is mature today and ready for action, and also having an eye to the future for the technology that will soon emerge and unlock the next layer of manual tasks. And as for that little hospital robot, Marty, well, you'll love him when he can bring you hot delicious food, ice cold beverages, and not wake you while you're sleeping. <laughs>